Oh, we are live, Matt. We are Excellent. Live. I know you said, hey, hang on, wait. No, no, we're good. Good afternoon. This is a special Thursday edition with my friend, Matt Preece. And I have on there uh, breaking news. Really, you're not breaking news. You're really the best practice. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and change that. Excellent. I'm Beth Berry. I'm Vice President of Business Development for Real Green. We are a software company that serves the green industry based in Wald Lake, Michigan, serving the United States, serving the United Kingdom. I am at my home studio in Indianapolis, Matt, and I can finally stop being jealous of you Michiganders and your snow because we finally got some. There but, you go. But this is what's sad. It was Sunday and it was 3.7 inches and that was a record for January 31st. I mean, what that doesn't even hit the books in Michigan, right? Yeah. Well, it, I guess it depends on the area, but not really. Um, yeah, we got a little bit more, but not a ton. I, I know we got enough because I have a long or a, a big rock U driveway, which is a nightmare. So That's I, have a, I, I have a little plow on an old tractor that I have that I do it with, but it's a it always likes to dig into the rocks. It's no fun there. That sounds like fun, though. Just piddling around on a tractor and you tell your wife, hey, I got to go shovel. Yeah, I like it. So I got Matt Paris with me today. Another episode of Best Practices Within Service Assistant. Matt is an enterprise account manager for Real Green. He does a terrific job. He also has a background in the green industry. So that is uh, very beneficial as he's talking to our customers solving problems. Today, we are going to talk about, I should have invited Joe Cusick, Matt, because when you get into a conversation with Joe about the value of service assistant and our products, and we'll sit down with someone at an event or maybe visiting a customer and they'll say, oh, we don't use condition codes. We, we don't do that. We just upsell the old fashioned way. He, he starts to twitch because... He knows why these features were built right into Service Assistant, no additional charge, and how important it is to utilize them to upsell in a very smart and strategic way. So now, February, some of our customers have already started the year actually in the South, but most of our customers are getting ready to head out, call it in the next month or so, and you want to be sure that you have set your condition codes properly for the 2021 season so that you can both identify and communicate with customers and upsell. So take it away, Matt. Show us how to use service assistant, the features with condition codes and very easy and strategic upsell campaigns. Yeah, excellent. So before we kind of share the screen, kind of to jump in, um, as always, as we kind of approach the end of the season, even if you don't have a season end, I think it's important to approach your condition codes on a regular basis there. Um, first off, to ensure that we don't have any duplicates or anything that existed in the past there, and then make it very clear what each of those condition codes indicate or do or upsell, um, and a bunch of different ways to go about that. So first off, for those that, that may not know, um, what a condition code is. That is going to be sort of the, the piece that we're documenting after the service has been completed for some sort, something that we're seeing on that property, some condition that we're documenting. Now, there's different ways beyond just a condition to utilize it, to say. Um, and you can look at those and, and utilize them in a ton of different ways there. So first off, like you mentioned there, Beth, upsell, great, great opportunity to use it. You note something on a customer's property, that you offer, hey, I offer a service for this. Why don't we tell them that because we noted this, here's a nice upsell to kind of roll into that piece there. Now, beyond that too, just to sort of expand your horizons there with, with condition codes is that you can use them for like customer action pieces is what we call them. Um, love, love these because not only maybe it'll help you with your overall service there. And this could be something from um, having, having, having been someone who who cut a lot of grass back in the day and that was kind of the the foundation of where i started in the green industry there was like something as simple as dog poop there beth uh, different ways to kind of approach something there and Maybe and i know we're kind of talking about that but my tea let's talk about dog poop let's do it <laughs> 
<laughs> no. But something as simple as that. We note something on the property that first off is going to help the homeowner, but also sort of leads to helping you out with the condition code. So something's documented. Let's say that you're a mosquito company um, or you offer mosquito services there. Standing water, the biggest culprit. Everybody's heard the thing a million times, the bottle cap will, you know, I, I don't know the exact number, but the bottle cap that they can grow from there. Um, so kind of that example there, you note standing water, um, drainage clogged, uh, those examples, that is going to lead to something that the customer could do on their side to increase the effect effectiveness of the treatments that you're providing. So something as simple as that, well, how does that, how does that work, Matt? Um, kind of that concept there is through the production entry screen, whether you're utilizing mobile or just SA there, you're going to have the ability to document condition codes. Um, and some of which will actually trigger some of those corresponding actions there. So whether it's an upsell message, whether it is just a customer action piece, there's a lot of different things you could do to utilize those and, and use them to benefit the company overall. Um, so just that piece there, kind of the basis for condition codes there, and we'll kind of jump over to service assistant again here in a minute. Um, but kind of stressing that piece, there's a ton of different things that you can sort of set up now, there's not always going to be a situation where maybe we've encompassed every condition code. And I've mentioned this in, in some other ones that we've done here on Facebook Live a couple times, where if we come up to that situation where there's a potential for an upsell and we just haven't done it before, or we come up and there is a condition that we're noting and the condition doesn't exist, this is the time to add it. Um, when you occur there, um, just choosing something else and trying to get that encouragement to your technicians is also another large piece of that um, because they're going to be the individuals who are on the on the site there. And I'm sure, Beth, you probably have some pieces there. I, I've heard, you know, a bunch of different examples of them offering incentives to make sure you document a condition code on each property and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of companies utilize some really cool tactics there to you're kind of make it more encouraging. We're saying so that the technicians will capture them out on the line. Correct. Yeah. So at Scott's, they had to come up with two and we had, I don't know, maybe a list of 20 or 30, but don't leave that property without identifying at least two things prior to condition codes, Matt, the technician, well, prior to mo mobile, they had to handwrite the note that the customer could never read. Then we moved to mobile in 2009. Fantastic. Now, if, with spell check, they could actually read the note, but they were still not as apt to leave a really detailed note. It was so much easier to grab those condition codes. So if they understand the importance of the condition codes, if you're changing them for 2021 and parameters, be sure you include that in your training with customer service and technicians. But yeah, the key is you got to get engagement for your technicians to use it. 100%. So to kind of dive in here, let me share. Make sure it shares for us, Beth. Let me know. Everything look good there? I think I see it. I do. Uh, okay. Awesome. I'm going to add it to the stream. stream. There we go. Perfect. So where we're at right now is, again, we are just in our settings and then condition codes. So really straightforward to get there. That's all we're going to have to navigate to for there. And then as far as the setup, um, first off, you're going to be sort of set with the categories that exist, that each of those uh, can be there, that each of our condition codes can actually fit into. This is nice if you have a ton of additional condition codes or we want to categorize them. Like I use that example, standing water. Maybe there's 10 different examples of standing water, depending on how specific you want to be. Clog drain, clog gutters, gutters, um, you know, lawn furniture, any of those things that exist. Or, you know, this could be something if if you're not the individual who's actually mowing, um, maybe the lawn's too cut too short by the by the homeowner or any of those pieces there. Something that we can note that'll help us in, in the long term there. So there are, again, and right now we're looking at sort of the, the database defaults in there. So different reasons for condition codes, essentially. And then we have sort of the breakdown of our condition codes here. Now, this is really where everything gets set up. We can categorize them. That's going to help us sort them and run reports against them. Um, now, this piece right here is really the, the full setup process here, which is really nice. So first off, choose a code, pretty straightforward. Choose our description, and then we can choose that category. Like I mentioned, we can add or edit any of those existing categories there. If it's available to us, um, and, and that's going to be the database there, 
And then this next box here is going to be the email piece. So this is sort of the critical piece here that exists if we are an AMA customer there. So with AMA, our after service email there, um, we can actually document any of those condition codes. So not only did we just go out to the properly, documented any of those condition codes, I don't know if we're auto posting in mobile or if we're not, either way, the customer is going to get that after service email there. And then from there, if you've documented a condition code that is actually a condition code that's set to an email, and we'll talk about this here in a minute, that's kind of the basic concept there. At that point in time, you're going to have that condition code show up same day to the customer. And then we'll talk about the, the pricing elements of it, but that is all you really need is here. And then you're gonna have the ability, obviously, if it's an upsell to put in estimate or sales tax and then a customer action. And this is what I kind of referred to earlier. Like we noted something on the property that we think the customer should be aware of or something that's going to sort of assist us in the long run there. Now, referring to a base sort of AMA template again, this is the, the base one here, no edits or customization there, just how everything pulls in. But if we look at sort of that base template, as long as you have that condition block on your after service email, you have everything that you need to kind of get those condition cords to roll over. Now, you'll note that you do have a spot for imagery as well as condition code setup here. So with condition code setup, you'll notice that we have our image selector right here. So that's just gonna open our file explorer where we can jump in and grab an image. Um, and that'll bring forward the image. And again, the difference between our text here, customer action versus an estimate and sales tax. So that's gonna sort of dictate what actually shows on those after service emails. Now beyond the after service emails, let's say map, not an AMA customer, our condition code still going to apply. Yes, in several ways. So there's there's different ways that not only can we upsell sort of on the CAW side, um, if they are a CAW customer, and even beyond that, all of this information is stored in reports. So we do have that information stored in reports. Now it'll be a little more of a manual process there to kind of pull those condition codes out. But then, like we talked about with reporting, um, the two weeks ago now, I believe, is we can actually pull those reports, use those send to actions to trigger anybody with those documented conditions over that period of time. So now we have that report ran and now maybe we're making a phone call for the upsell or putting it on their account or so we have the pricing for them regardless. So they're ready to roll there overall. So just a really important piece that I like to point out there. Um, now, not to get misguided, kind of jump back to the setup here. Um, next option is going to be your branch selector. If you have multiple branches, um, include it to the ones that you want it to be a part of. And then we're going to have our sent letter option, which is going to tie back to our specific upsell letters that we offer from the email side of things there, which is really nice on the AMA side. That is not so much the, the after service email. Um, you're actually going to have the ability to do the upsell letters as well, specifically. So those just trigger an upsell letter just strictly because of that condition code. So you could put a lot more of sort of your marketing presence there, like trying to push it as opposed to it just being something else that's on that after service email, which do actually have a really nice poll on them because those are clickable links now. It takes them to the direct pricing and CAW, even from the after service email, but you can really showcase it a bit more on just an individual upsell letter. Um, then you're gonna map that price chart um, and, and everything that sort of exists there. So we're gonna actually map that service to that condition code. And what's nice here is actually in mobile live, it'll color code all these condition codes separately, depending on the action it is. So teaching the technicians those pieces after you set up the condition codes will actually kind of highlight that piece. So they know if they click this, something's actually going to occur as opposed to this is more of an internal condition code piece. Um, other than that, that is really the setup process. There's not much, we add it, we're gonna save it to the field there. At that point in time, as long as we have sort of our email option checked and we do have that condition block set on our after service email, that puts us on motion. Now, if you're looking to do anything with, like I mentioned, the upsell email, something that you can definitely do with the AMA command center there, get those created, but excellent, excellent sort of alternative just for condition codes in general. Um, there is several companies utilizing these on a regular basis. I do see often that they're using condition codes in, in sort of 
documenting them, documenting things that they're seeing on the property, but not so much to use them for upsells. So that's why I kind of wanted to highlight that piece specifically, just because it can be utilized in so many different fashions. And then those condition codes, a lot of them, again, for the companies using them internally, is also the addition of the, the customer action one there, which I think is huge. Now, maybe the service you provide doesn't require a ton of customer action, um, but I'm sure you could probably think of a thing or two that would be extremely beneficial. Then it, from the customer's perspective, at least for the way that I look at it, it seems extremely personalized. Um, You're really because, setting the stage here for all of the AMA follow-up. Correct. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's such a nice thing there because they note that. And then if, it, if someone's actually going to follow up, if it is even one of those customer action pieces there, then they're following up at that point in time and note that, hey, I do actually have this condition of some sort. So it's really nice to kind of see that, lets them know that you're looking, doing more than just what you needed to do on the site there. So I do like that piece overall. Um, I'll tell you, Matt, if I could interrupt you where I also yeah. like it. So it, obviously, it's a very direct communication piece to the customer with a targeted bit of information. But from a customer service perspective, I always loved having visibility and knowing that while that technician was out on the lawn, he actually did point out to you that day that you had a broken sprinkler head or emerald ash borer or fill in the blanks because a lot of times customers don't think that you keep them up to speed on what's going on. Like you should be my personal gardener and you didn't tell me all of this. So not that you're going to say, well, we told you so and you didn't act on it, but it's good from a customer service perspective to say, oh, I noticed Matt was out on October 7th and he did note that on your invoice because, you know, a lot of times they, they may gloss over that, not read every note. So it's good from a customer service perspective. Definitely. Now, uh, something else to kind of highlight on this whole thing here that I just think is a, an excellent practice overall. And I'm sure several of the companies that we're working with right now have already adapted some of this practice here. But just something that I've seen sort of in passing that I think is excellent is making sure that we have all of this information readily available. So we talk about the condition code piece. Now, if that upsell, you're kind of thinking, well, it doesn't directly relate to the lawn size, let's say. Let's say the basis of the lawn size. So we don't technically know no pricing unless we went to do an estimate for it or whatever. Now, I've seen a lot of companies in the past sort of utilize that piece, like just the mindset, like maybe they will want this, they don't want it now, even if we didn't give them pricing or they didn't want pricing initially, um, is having that those additional measurements in there. Um, so just from the start there, so whether, let's say you're quoting the lawn piece, but you also do a perimeter pest in some nature there. Um, quoting the perimeter of the home because that lawn size is not always going to directly correlate to the price charts you have set up if you're doing everything in linear feed too. So just that initial estimate process, whether you're using measurement assistant, you're going to go in there and, and measure those properties. You're going to have the ability to do all those. Um, but just something to keep in mind when you're actually in there to sort of utilize those in that fashion and having those additional measurements ready means that you may broaden your horizon for upsells where you may have, well, we don't have that information in our system. Kind of how can we get that information in the system? Maybe it's not anything we can do 2021, but maybe 2022 because when we went out to the property this year, we got everything we needed. So um, again, maybe it's nothing we can't accommodate now, but I've seen that from time to time where uh, yeah, we'd love to upsell this, but we don't really have a way. We haven't measured this historically. So if we push this out, it's only going to apply to a few people. Um, it's a great time to do it, especially if you're still in sort of your off season there, kind of kicking some of those things off. And then that's stored on that customer's account infinitely until um, you actually need it, which is which is huge in my opinion there. Very cool. Matt, how long have you been with Real Green? I have been with Real Green almost two years now. Um, Seems like 20. Seems like it did. So uh, working for a company earlier, I used um, some SA4. So I actually used SA4 as a technician. So exactly. Well, Joe Music, Brian Batch, um, Dave Prevost, Dave Bolter, a lot of the marketing folks. We used to do road shows, and I can't believe I can't think of the name. Strike Marketing Gold was when when folks came to Michigan, but we would travel around the country and showcase product tour service assistant, but certainly all the marketing products. It was really this time of year and it was geared towards um, helping customers come up with a marketing plan. But Joe Cusick would always end every one of these sessions with, 
you want to do your upsells with a shotgun or a rifle? He said, he's an NRA guy. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think Sue's the one that owns the guns, but he said, you know, most of the time in the past in this industry, you would put a note on the invoice. You should call in for an aeration or upsell. Now is the time of year you need to buy grub control. That's with the shotgun, right? You're giving everybody the same message. And we know we have proven data case studies that would suggest when you're very targeted about what you're asking that customer to buy, it's needs-based selling and they're going to buy more often. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, and I, and I love that aspect and that's why I, I you know, we kind of went with the condition code topic today. Now there's not a ton on condition codes overall. It's very basic, which I think is excellent because it's easy to get your foot in the door if you haven't utilized them in the past. Um, as you can see the setup piece, really straightforward. And if you're already using AMA, you may want to check in in the command center. If you don't have access to the command center, if you check it out, you can kind of see, you know, do we have that condition block set up? Or if you don't know if you do or don't, um, we can definitely help you with that there just to make sure we get all those sorted out. Um, really, really great option there. Um, and, and as we kind of look down the condition code path, uh, there's no way of sort of not talking about product promotions in some way there. Everyone's getting promotions ramped up. So we do have a, the vast majority of companies utilizing those. But for those of you who haven't approached them, just want to stress that piece overall to take a look at the promotions again. Um, and if you're unaware of what that looks like or how to set them up, it's all done through sort of the CAW admin site there. So you can actually set up promotions for your customers to sort of log in and already have something there as long as you have a lawn size there. So there's not a customer promotions, um, active customer promotions, marketing customer promotions, um, and then a, a bunch of different outlets as well. So different ways to go about it. Prepay promotions, as you know, we talked about prepay letters, but you're going to have all those options there that you can set up. And those are another piece to sort of supplement and pad the other AMA letters as well. So we talked about the after service and condition codes populating there. That's excellent. But our promotions, we can actually display our promotions on the vast majority of the AMA letters. And those can be completely designed. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a centerpiece to that email there where you're getting the information you need, whether they're about to come out to the property or an after service email where we just came out. But you'll still have, always have that capability to display a promotion. And those promotions tie to services very similar, like a condition code, um, where as long as you have the pricing that exists there, whether it's already on the customer's account or a price chart and a size of some sort to calculate it, then that customer is going to be able to get that pricing in real time there and without any interaction, as long as you've had everything set up there. So I really, really like the promotion piece because it kind of goes hand in hand with the condition codes where... You know, we're pushing this because of something we documented here, but just overall, here's the promotions that we offer as well. So it's kind of a bunch of different things to give them outlets where you have, like you mentioned there, Beth, more of a personalized touch with the condition codes where it's like, wow, they did notice this on my property versus here's the promotion. And even those promotions adapt to the customer's account depending on, you know, what criteria they meet. So those feel a little more focused as well. Um, even when doing them in mass, which is excellent because it's pulling in each of those data fields from the customer's account. So they're all addressed properly and, and closed out properly, which is awesome. And the return on investment, Matt, for an AMA upsell, I'm just going to say it's practically free. Don't send me your AMA bill and show me what you paid for and email. I, I know it's not free, but it's practically free. When you look at cost per sale, cost to add a new customer, um, it is, uh, it's an amazing product and one of the most used of all real green products. So I am challenging all of our customers today. You're going to run those condition codes. You're going to access the AMA, um, control center to be sure your promotions are set up, gather your team members, sales, technicians, customer service, be sure everyone is on board and you haven't overlooked some specific condition codes that could be meaningful to you this year. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to gather some of the best list of condition codes to share with you guys, because I'll bet in my master list, you'll find one that someone else is using. You'll go, that is a terrific idea. But this is the week. So you have your condition code boot camp, your AMA promotion boot camp. Call us if you have any questions with that. Matt, it, it looks so simple. I could do it. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and something that we're going to kind of share after there, Beth, is uh, some videos that actually walk you through even step by step, too. So um, I got some promotional video, some promotion videos that we've had some Real Green staff members do as well as condition code videos there. So we'll share those with you, which is going to be excellent. That'll kind of walk you through because I know this wasn't a full walkthrough, but I really want to kind of stress the importance of it and where you could utilize it, where that video will be more of a guided. Here's how you set it up without any of the other insight on there. So um, wonderful. Really, really nice setup. Hopefully that'll get everyone rolling there. And just to, not to not to correct you there, Beth, but just if you're setting up the promotion, the promotion will start with the CAW admin setup and then exactly. um, yeah, and then admin. AMA setup, just making sure we have the you've got CAW. Know. Thank you. You can correct me anytime. <laughs> you gotta have the customer assistant website, and then that fuels the setup for the AMA products. Exactly. Perfect. Very good. All right. Well, Matt, thank you for spending your Thursday afternoon with me. What have you thought about what we're going to talk about next week? I have a couple things on the docket here. Um, I don't know what direction we're going to roll with, so I don't want to. All right. Well, I will post those when you come up with whatever you think is best. We know our customers love to hear from you. This was a very important topic. And if any of our customers have a topic you would like Matt to take a deep dive into, service assistant or one of our products. We're happy to do that on our Wednesday. Oh, I said today's Thursday. Today's Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, yes. It just feels like this week has gone longer, Matt. Yeah. This it week does. has been longer, but we'll have another best practice for all of you next Wednesday. Matt, thanks for sending me some snow. You go get out on your tractor and that gravel driveway and get it cleaned off. Will do. All right. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks for having me, Beth. Everyone have a great day.